Yo Wagwan, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to copy over a chorus in FL Studio 20. This is super, super important for any time you're creating a song, because it's definitely something that you're gonna to have to do. You need to know how to copy over a chorus. I'm gonna be showing you a very easy way to do it so that you don't spend a lot of time trying to get the chorus in the right place and trying to make sure that it's on time. So definitely stay through to the end. Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Carter Ray from jaycarterray.com, teaching you how to be better at music, online marketing, and online business. This is the number one spot for musicians and creators that don't wanna be starving artists. So if that sounds like you, click that subscribe button, check out the rest of the content on the channel. You will love it here. Now let's get straight in to this. This is a single that I'm releasing this week. By the time this video is up, the single will be out. It's called Trust. Just go on Spotify, search J Carter Ray Trust and you'll find it. All right, so first of all, you need to make sure you, you're at the right BPM in your project. If you're not at the right BPM, it's just gonna make everything way harder. And before I play back these chorus vocals, I just wanna let you know, I had to turn off all the doubles, so it's not gonna sound as epic as it's gonna sound in the actual full song. If you wanna check out the full song, go to jcarterray.com forward slash Spotify or search jcarterray trust on Spotify. But let's play this back so you can hear what the chorus sounds like. Obviously, the first chorus is gonna be correct. It's always gonna be correct and in the right place because that's where you record it. When you move it, that's where the problems start to happen. That's where you might have your chorus a little bit off time and you might be thinking, is that off time or is it off time? And in this, I'm gonna be showing you how to make sure that it's completely on time and to get perfect every time. So let's play this back so you can hear what's going on and where everything's supposed to be. And then I'll show you how to actually copy it over. So there we go. Big funds on the road to riches. Made so many sacrifices, I was dead, bro. All I know is grind and scrap it on my headstone. Got hair on my own. Matt Black from sitting all alone. Ain't no one that I can trust. But me, all the friends I had I lost You see, we went down a different road Couldn't play it safe, I was cold and alone Smiling through the pain, ain't no one that I can trust But me, all the friends I had I lost You see, we went down a different road Yeah, Couldn't play it safe, I was cold and alone Yeah, Smiling through the pain mm -hmm. hey, Okay, so actually, I just realized I turned off the effects for all the main um for all the doubles for so the vocals on the left and the right so that may have sounded a bit weak really i should have turned it all off my bad <laughs> but honestly i didn't sing this stuff too bad so it doesn't sound that bad everything sounds pretty much fine so let's actually show you how this is done okay so Let's get rid of this so we can kind of make more sense. Now, first of all, as I said, you want to set the BPM correctly. Then you pretty much want to have all aspects of the chorus recording next to each other, just so that it's easier to select and move over and you can do everything at once. Here, I've broken this rule because we've got ad libs here and I'm not 100% sure. What, I think this is ad libs as well. I'm not 100% sure. It looks like these are both ad libs. I'm not sure which one's supposed to be on and which one's not. So I'm just going to allow it. Either way, generally, you want to have all your chorus vocals next to each other just so it's easier to copy over. Okay. Now, what you want to do is when you actually record your chorus vocals, you want to record it from a specific place. So, for example, four bars before the chorus goes in or two bars or what have you so that you've got a clean cut so as you can see this starts four bars before the chorus goes in so i've got one two three four and now i know if i copy this over i want my other one to be starting four bars before the chorus is supposed to come in and you can tell that by you know what the beat looks like that's the first thing you need to basically make sure that you have a clear cut start point to your chorus and if you don't have that if you don't have your chorus coming in four bars or however many bars and you just started recording and you recorded it you know straight on the chorus or whatever and you're not able to bring it back this far back or anything then another thing that you can do 
is you can either just add a an audio file basically so i can add this audio file like let's say eight bars before the chorus and then i can use this audio file to make sure that i know exactly where i'm going so let me show you an example here and because all this stuff is going on it's a bit hard so let me insert a track there we go so now i can add an audio file like eight bars before the chorus and i can be like okay this is where it needs to be eight bars before the chorus i need to make sure that this is where i've just put it and then it's very easy to copy this over like so uh, is that the right place i think that's about the right place let's quickly check no that is not the right place <laughs> at all <laughs> um this is like just before the pre-chorus ends so that's right there and then if we play this back you'll see how that's in the right space no, okay. no one that I can trust but me. so that's how that works and another thing you can do you don't have to use the the audio you can actually just create a midi pattern if that's what you want to do so you can just create a midi pattern and just draw that in and then you know make that longer so that it's exactly where you need it to be and you can use that as your marker point to know where the chorus needs to be now if you have this on the wrong bpm this isn't going to work okay like <laughs> Pretty much nothing is going to work if you go on the wrong BPM. So make sure you're at the right BPM. The next thing I want to show you is just go to your snap to grid and change it to bar. It just makes it way easier to move things over if it's on the bar. If it's not on the bar, it's going to be you're going to have way more problems with actually moving stuff into place. OK. So this is for this starts four bars before the first hit of the chorus. So at 41. So this is pretty easy for us to move over. All we need to do is look at where it is, look at where it starts in relation to the beat. This is the chorus section of the beat. And then we can just hold down shift and right click or left click, I mean, and move it over like so. And then we have everything in the right place. So let's play this back. Stone, go ahead on my own. Matt Black from sitting all alone. Ain't no one that I can trust but me. All the friends I had are lost. So as you can see, perfect right position. Now with all these other layers, obviously, if everything was together, all you need to do is select it at once. And then you just focus on the top one and move that over like i just showed you but if you've got stuff moving around like how i've got it here then all you need to do is use the exact same method as i showed you before you can either use the pattern or the audio and just create a uh, a marker basically eight bars or four bars before the chorus starts so as you can see this is right where the pre-chorus starts. So I can just delete all of that and basically copy that, move this to where I see that pre-chorus starting. Oh, my bad. So hold down shift. Now, basically it was control and left click to select all of this, by the way, then hold down shift. And now I just need to move that to where the pre-chorus starts. Give me a sec, I can't actually see it. So it's supposed to be right here move that right there and zoom in to make sure we're at the right place and as you can see everything's perfect so now if i play that back everything will be in the time but i did turn all of these off so let me turn a couple of them on so that's how that works i i don't know what this is Hmm. Hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember what was going on when I did that. So I can't really get rid of that right about now. But as you can see, it's very, very easy. You just set some markers using either a pattern or audio and then look at basically where the chorus starts using the audio file and just move stuff over. Just control and left click to select and then shift and left click to copy while moving. 
and that's how you get everything in the correct spot another way is to just look at the audio file since this is the main audio file if i needed to move everything else over i just need to make sure that this is in line with everything else so you just look at the audio and you'll see where certain things line up so this starts right here we want this to start the same time as that so this is the right place basically and that's how you copy your chorus over so let's quickly recap but before we do that i've got a free gift for you for making it this far in the video that free gift is five of my best beats for absolutely free the link is in the description down below or go to jcarterray.com forward slash free beats you can use these beats to upload your song to spotify apple music all streaming platforms and make money from your music starting today go and download that asap thank me later and now let's recap first of all you need to set the right bpm if you don't set the right bpm everything else is going to be very very hard you're not going to be able to do the stuff with like the bars and all that sort of stuff because it's going to be on the wrong bpm and everything's just going to be out of time so set the right bpm then you want to create a marker for your chorus or start recording your chorus four bars before the chorus comes in or eight bars eight bars is a bit much so i do four bars really because eight bars you're going to be wasting a lot of time doing that four bars before the chorus comes in you start recording from there and then it's very very easy to just move this over because you know this is four bars before the chorus comes in and you just move that over if you've got it in some weird place like this or maybe it's not set to bar and it's set to half beat or something and you just go at some random place it's going to be harder for you to easily copy stuff over but of course if you do that you can just create a pattern and set that as your marker or you can use an audio file and set that as your marker as i've shown you then you use control and left click to select the file and then shift and left click to move that file over into the correct space and generally you want to use the audio file so you can see what's going on so as you can see i can see that this is where the first hit of the chorus comes in this is obviously the pre-chorus because everything's breaking down so i can clearly see where everything's supposed to be so i can see four bars before the chorus is there eight bars before it is is that a boss is there basically so it makes it very easy for me to move everything over and get everything into the right place now my question of the day is when are you releasing your next song it's about time man you gotta start putting music out let me know when you're releasing your next song in the comment section down below i think that'll be very very interesting and if you've got any questions or any other tutorials that you want me to make please let me know in the comment section down below and i'll see you in the next video where you'll learn more about music online business and online marketing peace out i'll see you there